Good evening and welcome to the Enfield Town Council meeting, regular meeting. Um, the time is 7.05. This meeting can also be found on YouTube. And welcome everyone. The prayer, please stand. May all the residents of Enfield find comfort and compassion during these difficult times of natural disasters that we hear about each day. The war in Ukraine, may we pray for an end to all the suffering. May we ask for our elected council members to find wisdom and humility to lead Enfield, affirming the dignity and rights for all of our residents. May we seek and pray for peace and unity in our town. Pledge of Allegiance, I flag the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Roll Mayor, call, please. Mayor Crisadi. Here. Councillor Despard. Councillor Finger. Here. Here. Councillor Hopkins. Here. Councilor Ludwig. Here. Here. Councilor Mangini. Here. Councilor Pisner. Here. Councilor Santanella. Here. Councilor Ungeyer. Here. Councilor Sakala. Here. And sorry, Councilor Ludwig. D did he say here? Uh, okay, he sorry. Here. That's yes. 10 members present and none absent. Okay. Next fire evacuation announcement. In the event of a fire, there are exits in the back of the chambers and to my left and the audience's right. Exit through the doors, go downstairs and into the parking lot. Minutes of preceding meetings. Do I have a motion to accept the minutes on the special meeting, April 18th, 2022? So moved. Councilor Mangini and a second. 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 Uh, Councilor Hopkins. But <clears throat> By a show of hands, all in favor, please say yay. yay. Those opposed? Nay. And any abstentions? Okay. We have, uh, let's see, uh, Matt Despard and yay. Mike Ledwick. Mike Ledwick? Yay. Okay. There are yay. Nine, nine yays and one abstention. Motion carries. Do I have a motion to accept the minutes on the regular meeting, April 18th, 2022? So moved. Councilor Mangini and second, Councilor Pisner. By show of hands, all in favor say yay. 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 Uh, nay, uh, yay. Any nays and any abstentions? Okay. Uh, motion carries 10 yays. Do I have a motion to accept the minutes for the special meeting, April 20th, 2022? So moved. Uh, Councilor Mangini and a second. Second. Uh, Councilor Hopkins. And once again, by show of hands, uh, all in favor say yay. yay. Any yay. nays? Yay. yay. Okay. And there's no abstentions. Motion carries 10 0. 10 yays. Next, special guests. I think we carried them while we hit all three, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Special guests, uh, we'd like to welcome the Youth Council. Uh, would you like to come forward, please? And welcome. It says, it says on. Yeah. Hello? There you go. Oh, okay. 
Hi, I'm Andrea Mashat, the Grandson Performance Manager for Enfield Social Services. I'm here um, because Bill Sear, the Prevention Co Coordinator, could not make it tonight. Um, in my former role, I was a Program Coordinator for Enfield Youth and Family Services, where I had the pleasure of working with the Enfield Youth Council for many years. So I'm here tonight to introduce them, um, and they're going to talk a little bit about a project that they were working on. Hi, I'm Jamie. I'm the president of the Youth Council and I'm a senior at Enfield High. Hi, I'm JC Estrada. I'm a freshman at Enfield High. Hi, I'm Angelina Shi, and I'm a freshman at Enfield High School. Hello, my name is Dylan Lawson. I'm the vice president of the Enfield Youth Council and I'm a senior at Enfield High. Well, welcome. The Enfield Youth Council is connected to the Enfield Together Coalition. We are a youth-led group that work on refining our leadership skills while preventing drug and alcohol use in Enfield. We do this by promoting our messaging on social media through the Enfield Youth Service Show on 1077 WACC at Esnanta Community College and various projects across the community. Today, we are here to present our public service announcement we created for the Connecticut Youth Gambling Prevention Awareness Media Project Showcase. This showcase was hosted partnership by DMAS Program or Problem Prevention Services, the Connecticut Council on Problem Gambling, the Capital Region Education Council, and the Regional Behavioral Health Action Organizations geared to educate youth on the importance of prevention and warning signs of problem gambling. For the contest, we decided to record an audio-only PSA about gambling components in video gaming. This spread awareness about different gambling components within video gaming geared towards children. To record the PSA, we worked with Adam Rivers at Isnanta Community College. We recorded our portions one by one in a booth. Adam edited the portions together and we submitted the PSA to the showcase. At the showcase on March 23rd, we learned we won best message to the community. The Enfield Youth Council is recruiting new members for the next school year. You can reach out to Bell Sierra if needed. We hope you enjoy our PSA and you can ask any questions after it plays. I bet I can get the legendary card first. But each loot box is $5. It'll be worth it. Trust me. One hour later. <sighs> we have to get it at one point. What's going on? We're trying to see who can get the legendary card first. How much money have you spent? You don't even want to know. And how many legendary cards have you gotten? None. But don't worry, we'll get it soon. <laughs> don't you see that this is gambling? The truth is, you're addicted to the idea that you could win something valuable. You're wasting your money on something that's not even real, when you could use it on going out with friends, food, or future savings. According to Gamble Aware, of the 93% of children who play video games, up to 40% opened loot boxes, which are randomized chances for rewards to be used during video game play. This gambling aspect within gaming can be addictive. Learn to play responsibly. If you or someone you know is struggling with a gambling addiction, know that help is available. Call 1-888-789-7777. This PSA was brought to you by the Enfield Youth Council. Thank you. Well, congratulations and thank you for that uh, PSA. Uh, one thing that I think really has to be, uh, you know, focused on, especially in high school, and I, I think it's excellent in terms of, of gambling. Uh, I know high school students uh, are involved with it, and I think this is uh, something that is needed. So thank you very much. You guys do a great job. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Is there anybody else who'd like to make a comment or anything? Good job. Yeah, good job. Thank you. Thank you very much. I just had one point. I think peers can um, be the greatest influence to other peers. So that would speak volumes. So good job. And Andrea, it's nice to see you again. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, next, public communications. Any person wishing to speak in front of the council, please state your name and address for the record. You will have five minutes to speak in the first round and three minutes for any subsequent round thereafter. Uh, please refrain 
from personalities, and we ask everyone to be respectful to one another in this, uh, in this room, please. Do I have anybody who would like to approach the council? Uh, Mr. Janitis. My name is Peter Janitis, Three Farmstead Circle, Enfield. I really didn't intend to speak tonight. I was trying to write some notes down after I found out a little piece of information. Um, it's come to my attention that you may be voting on flying a flag in June. Um, and if that's the case, that's why I'm here. I don't know how many of you heard about the Supreme Court decision today. Is there anybody up there that has? Just with a shake of head, okay. So you know what that entails and why they ruled the way they did. It was a nine nothing vote, nine nothing in this day and age. That's extremely rare. And it basically dealt with the city of Boston uh, who had made, I think something like 284, the number's not right, but it, it's, it's a, a pretty high number of everybody who's wanted to fly a flag in Boston had the right to fly the, bat, a fly, fly the flag. Uh, at the town hall or the government building. Uh, and in the whole time that they had been doing this, only one, only one group was denied the right to fly the flag. Now you had f flags up there representing all kinds of civic groups, youth groups, sporting teams, even the gay, gay pride flag was allowed to be f flied. But this one group that was denied was a Christian group. They wanted to have a, f a cross on the flag. And that's why they were denied. Because they had a cross. Now the Supreme Court basically was saying that if the government is going to have the right to determine what flags fly, that's not the government's job according to the Constitution. It's not their job. If the government is going to do that, then they are denying people's First Amendment rights. Now, they never had to cross that bridge until they denied the Christian group the right to fly their flag. So before you take your vote, think long and hard of the cannon worms you might be opening up. Now, people, one of the things Boston said, they were afraid, well, what if somebody wants to fly a Nazi flag? Or somebody wants to fly a white supremacist flag? or a terrorist group's flag. If you're gonna allow everybody to do it, then you gotta allow them to do it too. It's their freedom of expression, freedom of speech. I actually flew a Confederate flag for a couple days at my house, because I've got I've, I've got all kinds of flags. Uh, I, I collect them from all the countries that I went to. Um, but I, I realized, you know, God, I could be offending somebody on the street, so I took it down because of that reason that I thought I might defend somebody. But people who say you can't fly the Confederate flag, if you know the history of the Confederate flag, it wasn't the flag of the Confederacy. It was the battle flag of Northern Virginia. Throughout the entire Civil War, the Confederacy was arguing over what flag we should have, what flag we should have. And that Confederate flag uh, that flew with uh, uh, Robert E. Lee, Lee's uh, army, it was for the men who were fighting the fighting boys. Now you look at the, the, the majority of the Confederate army, it was made up of people who basically couldn't read or write. They came off of farms, they never went very far from their land. That's why he had that flag, to honor them. They didn't own slaves. Maybe a lot of the officers and obviously the plantation owners, people wealthy, owned slaves, but not those boys. And that was the purpose of that flag. And that flag, the meaning of the flag, got hijacked over time. The Ku Klux Klan adopted it. And then you had white supremacists adopting that flag. It didn't mean, what it means today is not what it was intended to mean when it first started. So be careful with the flags, please. I'll stop there for now. Thanks a lot. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to approach the council?
Matt Schmidt, 1304 Bigelow Commons. Good evening, Town Council. Last week, the Planning and Zoning Commission reduced by a factor of 10 the buffer zone around parks and churches in the Thompsonville area of town and only the Thompsonville area of town in regard to cannabis establishments. The reasoning for reducing this protection for Thompsonville residents was based on a misinformed understanding of Connecticut Senate Bill 1201 and the disproportionately impacted areas described therein. The Planning and Zoning Commission received such misinformation from present District 2 Councilor Santanella during a March 10th Planning and Zoning Commission meeting at which Councilor Santanella acted as a representative of this council. His testimony before the Planning and Zoning Commission can be found around the one hour, seven minute mark of that meeting on Enfield Television's YouTube channel. In short, Councilor Santanella misinterpreted how the prioritized lottery works when it comes to licensure. The disproportionately impacted areas he referenced are actually used by the state to give residents of those areas priority in a lottery when it comes to obtaining a license to establish a cannabis enterprise, not to the area itself as he presented. No preference or priority is made to the site location in the social equity lottery as it is called, meaning the Thompsonville, buff Thompsonville buffer zone reduction is useless for its stated purpose, which then calls into, uh, <clears throat> into question its passage. I tried to address this at the Planning and Zoning Commission public hearing this past Thursday, April 28th, which you can find on Enfield Television's YouTube channel at the two hour, 42 minute mark. Yes, that's over two and a half hours into the meeting. At the last minute, the commission decided to alter the agenda and push the public hearing off till the end of their meeting, forcing residents to wait till the end of the night to speak. And all 10 of the intrepid speakers that night spoke in opposition to the change, none in favor, none. The only reason I could think of for why planning and zoning would ignore this unanimous opposition is because of their mistaken belief of how the prioritized cannabis lottery works, especially since that commission's chairperson restated this falsehood at the beginning of the public hearing as the basis for the buffer zone reduction. That commission's mistaken belief was either shaped by or at least supported by Councilor Santanella's testimony before that body, which is ultimately why I am bringing this before you tonight. I've argued previously to this council that trust is essential to the proper operation of government. When mistakes are found or exposed, government bodies need to act to repair the damage done. And damage certainly has been done here. Thompsonville is being treated as some lesser stepchild to the rest of town, not being afforded equal protection. All based on a misconception, misconception that reducing the buffer zone in this section of town will result in an advantage in the lottery for cannabis licenses. A misconception all are now fully aware of. To ignore this knowledge would only further erode any trust the people of this town still have left in its elected bodies. So considering that the Planning and Zoning Commission took action based on a counselor's misinterpretation of Connecticut Senate Bill 1201, testifying on behalf of this council, serving as its representative, I ask that this council now act to repair this mistake. Since the Planning and Zoning Commission falls under the oversight of this council, and since the commission proceeded on false information as provided by this council, and since now the regulations of Thompsonville have been altered under false pretenses, I believe this council needs to take some sort of remedial action. What action that is, I leave to you, but I will say that I and many others will be interested to see how this council responds to its error. And please save any arguments about the many glorious benefits of the cannabis industry. This is not about that. This is about a section of town being treated differently than all the others. If you want to contend that reducing buffer zones around parks and churches is beneficial, then do it for the entire town or don't do it at all. And if you think that Thompsonville should not be afforded the same protections as the rest of the town, at least be honest about it and don't use a misinterpretation of the law or act under false pretenses to advance an agenda because the ends should never be used to justify the means. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, okay next. Kelly Hemmler, 10 Hartford Avenue. Uh, Matt is exactly right. We were there just because we just didn't want to be treated differently. It's not fair. Um, I would like to bring to your attention that it's my belief that the Planning and Zoning Public Hearing XZA number 3040 on April 28, 2022 was never properly closed or properly voted on. Um, I've, I e already emailed you the whole sequence of events, so I won't go through that. Um, but there's two main problems from the public hearing. The public should have had the opportunity to comment uh, one more time after the commissioner's comments, and we were denied that opportunity. Number two, the public hearing was not closed, and therefore the vote should be void, and the, um, the, whole, the whole meeting should be redone. 
Thank you. Appreciate you listening. Thank you. Next, Mr. Peabody. Hey, Good Bob. evening. How are Good you? evening, all. Ray Peabody, 370 Washington Road, our fair town. First of all, I want to thank you all for the time that you put in to uh, lead our town. It's, I know it's sometimes a thankless job, sometimes a hateful job, but it's got to be done, and I greatly appreciate what you all are doing. But I come tonight to talk about, I wasn't able to go to a public hearing. I had a business engagement on last week. But I want to talk to you about taxes. And right now, our current tax rate is 34.23, I believe, is our mill rate. Okay. We just had a reevaluation in what some people call a false market. It's going to go up. It's going to crash pretty soon. It's going to crash because interest rates are going up. And traditionally, prices go down when interest rates go up. We'll see what happens in the next few months. But here's my point. With the proposed mill rate, as I understand it, it's 30.49, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. If proposed. If I add in my district tax, it comes up to 34.89. That being living in the Shaker Pines district at a 4.40 mill rate. So what that means to me is my annual taxes go up in excess of $1,000 a year. Now, I'm approaching that golden age, so-called golden retirement age, um, where I go on a fixed income. I can't afford it. And many of our seniors in town um, are on a fixed income or getting close to that period in time. And that kind of an increase uh, is not going to, and I have an average house, and that kind of increase just cannot be, be met by most of our taxpayers. Now, if you're young and you're working, and if I had 10 more years of career left, I wouldn't care that much. I would, but not that much. So I went through the budget, as I do, and those of you who remember my Board of Ed days, I went through it quite thoroughly. So I looked, and I first blush, I found $1,661,000 worth of questions. Things like a storage building at over $600,000 for, for DPW might be needed, might not, might be in your presentation, I don't know. But then you have um, a side load refuse truck, uh, um, front loader refuse truck, 362000 You have a ball field, 250000 I did not include what my friend Mr. Sheridan said, $100,000 to move a Civil War statue. So here's, 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 here's the guidance I would like to give you, what I lived by when I started getting involved in politics here in town and back in 05. My first two priorities have always been public safety and public education. Now, granted, they have to prove the value of their budgets, uh, but I pretty much will, would dig through those and could be convinced to leave alone, even though I really wasn't when I was on the school board, but that's a different story. Um, so everything else would be tied for third, and that includes quality of life budget expenditures. We may have to pause those for a little bit of time. So that's my request, is to pause some of the quality of life things, which I believe are important, but not important as keeping the lights on, keeping things going in town, keeping public safety up to snuff, including EMS, which does a really good job, by the way, when you look at their expenditures versus uh, uh, the revenues. They do a pretty decent job there. So those are my comments on budget. Now, last meeting, I believe there are a lot of comments made about these, the uh, potential of Enfield Public Schools going into a become an alliance district. As I mentioned in the Board of Ed meeting, I look, took a look at numbers going back a number of years. Our graduation rates, two, two out of the past three years, exceeded state expectations. Our SAT scores, which is something I always pay attention to, are just a few points off on average, which means you have a disparity between those kids that performed well and those who did not. And the biggest impact on our test scores is the free and reduced lunch program. 48.6% in 2019 and 2020 are on that program. That means almost half of our students are at poverty level. That is a concern, and that's what really causes our scores to, to drop. Because let's face it, and I'm going to say the politically incorrect thing here. If mom and dad, are, or just mom or just dad, are busting their humps to make ends meet, the kids sometimes don't get the attention that they need. Because when they come home from work, they're beat all to heck and they fall by the wayside. So my proposal to, to the Board of Education and to you all is contact the State Board of Ed and start breaking these, these test scores by four different co cohorts. 
number one, mainstream students, English as a second language students, students who are on free and reduced lunch programs, and special ed students, because right now they're all lumped into one. And when you talk about ESL students, English as a second language, they have one year or really nine months, if they don't speak a word of English, to come up to speed on a language that's very complex and um, perform at grade level. That's all I have to say, and everybody have a great day, and thank you for your service. Thank you, Ray. Is there anybody else that would like to come in front of the council? Joe Golis, 31 Stardust Drive in Enfield, Connecticut. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak. Uh, thank you for you folks. Um, I'm not sure I agree with anything, but I will start. First, I'd like to thank Ke uh, Kelly Hemmler. Uh, she's uh, on the board. I think she's, well, she's on the board for Enfield Loaves and Fishes. Um, I volunteered for 11 years. There are a lot of people that volunteered longer than I did, once a month. Uh, it's uh, a lot of faith groups. So I'm disappointed that people come up here and say uh, religion and politics don't mix and so forth. Enfield was built on a lot of faith groups. Um, that's one thing. Uh, Kelly Hemmler put out the recent refusal of um, donations, and she put it out very, um, how can I say it, uh, diplomatically. She complimented uh, both um, uh, the previous people that, uh, that ran it. Um, I have a, a, a brain thing, but anyways, they ran it for 34 years, uh, and they ran it at St. Andrews, which has one-third the kitchen. Uh, and I worked in that kitchen. It has no dishwashing facility to speak of. The current environment is much better for the residents, and it is staffed by people of faith as well as people who don't uh, have any particular faith. Um, I, I, this is a biblical saying, but it could be a saying in any culture. Judge not, lest ye be judged. Um, I wish uh, Miss Andrews uh, a, uh, a successful uh, operation. I think she is, uh, understands it. But uh, donations, uh, having been a Catholic for all my life, uh, we donated money and personnel and time and food to every country, including communist countries. You know, if they refused our donation, so be it. Um, secondly, uh, I'd like to uh, speak, uh, I didn't think I was going to speak uh, this quickly, on the Enfield youth who have been here. Uh, I compliment them for gambling. I was a teacher for 18 years, chemistry, physics, and biology. Uh, and before there was even legalized sports betting, which I don't think should happen in this state, uh, because it is going to migrate down to our youth. I know the conversations that happened in the hallway. Uh, I think also the Enfield Youth Group should look at drugs. Uh, again, I thank Kelly Hemmler. Uh, she said to me one day, and I taught chemistry and physics. So I will debate anybody. Marijuana, and I also took a graduate course in the chemistry of poisons. Marijuana is a poison. And it's not recreational. And that, Ms. Hemmler didn't teach me the poisons, but she taught me that. It's not recreational. It should not belong anywhere in anybody's environment, including adults. And I've had that argument with everybody on that issue. Um, let me see. Uh, also on the um, 
On the, uh, re I, I'd like to compliment uh, previous Mayor Mike, I call him, Mr. Ludwig, Mr. Fingers, and I forget the third person who said, we should evaluate this purchasing consultant. And what was said was that why don't we see who's in Enfield? Well, you're looking at a purchasing specialist. No, I don't want the job, but I think you should have been done a better vetting of that. Uh, the organization, uh, after um, Mr. Finger said, I can't find this person on the internet, being a research scientist, a, uh, uh, a purchasing person, and just a person that knows how to investigate, I found the person. And the person used to work for Meriden, the city of Meriden, and she worked uh, for, um, I, is that my, uh, is that my timer? Okay, I'll be back. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to approach the council for the first time? Okay, for a second time. You'll have three minutes this time. Mr. Janitis. Peter Janitis, Three Farmstead Circle, Enfield. <laughs> now I remember what I forgot to say the first time, <laughs> some of it. Um, the, the Ukrainian flag was also brought up at the, your last council meeting. Um, I don't know where you're going with that one, but again, to continue on the theme, be careful of what you're, you're wishing for, because I would think most people sympathize with the Ukrainians to the utmost. But there could be a minority group here in Enfield. I know West Springfield and Westfield are filled with Russians. So what if a Russian wants to fly a flag now? You're going to hoist up the Ukrainian flag? I don't care if it's just one Russian family. It would be their right to do it whether you, well, I would hope you disagree with what Putin's doing. Um, so I, I would caution you to avoid national politics and international affairs. I mean, we have enough problems going here. Uh, the town of Enfield is very divisive at the moment, particularly at the Board of Ed level. Uh, and we, we don't really need anything else to divide us. If a private citizen wants to fly a flag, I don't care what flag they fly. It's their right to do it on their property. Let them fly their flags there. So if you want your Ukrainian flags, your, your whatever flag, I'm not going to go into detail, but uh, I don't think it's the job of the town council to be deciding what flags we fly right here, unless you're going to let everybody fly anything they want. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else? Mr. Peabody? It's been a long time since I've sat in the seat that Peter just sat in. It feels kind of weird. Um, what I didn't get a chance to make a request, and that is, can you do? Can the council, working with the town manager and others, get that mill rate under thirty point two two four percent, whatever it was? Um, primarily because, like I mentioned before, our seniors just can't afford it. We really can't. Um, and I get to say that because now I'm an official senior. I'm 65. No, I know you are too, Bob. <laughs> it's a very select club from what I hear. <laughs> Many people are surprised I made it this far. But anyway, again, thanks for all your good work. And um, that's my request is get it down there. I mean, just because you had an evaluation and stuff and you're bringing the mill rate down by four points, um, doesn't mean you got to stop there, please. And whatever we can defer, and I hate deferring because that's just kicking the can down the road, but this may be a time to do it. Thank you. Thank you for your good work, and okay. take care. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to come forward? I forgot for the subscription were Murray and Priscilla, right? You're right. Uh, yeah. 
Okay. The names I forgot for the pursuit uh, for the soup state, kitchen, uh, the Elmfield Lowe's and address fishing. again. Oh, I have to do it. Yes. Again? Okay. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thirty-one Stardust Drive in Enfield, Connecticut. Um, the names I forgot for the soup kitchen were Enfield uh, were uh, um, Murray and Priscilla Bryson, who ran that for thirty-four years. Um, I also noticed that um, one of the councilmen. Uh, Mr. Santanella mentioned that uh, there were uh, monies, about 7,000. I'd also like to say that the Archdiocese of Hartford uh, presented $10,000, and they have been doing it for years, and so uh, I, I want to uh, acknowledge that. Uh, going back to the purchasing consultant, um, I really think you investigate before the purchasing consultant, by the way, was the red flag for me was she was somehow associated with West Haven. Uh, that's like, that's a red flag. If you read anything about West Haven, it wasn't even the purchasing. It was the financial people that were involved in the alleged uh, corruption that the uh, federal government is investigating on. I don't know if our attorneys general are investigating it on the state level. Um, so I'm just puzzled. Um, because I grew up in Enfield, and Enfield, a lot of the people that are here or have left are very smart. They're in all occupations. We built engines for Pratt & Whitney. We know our technology. We built spacesuits for Collins Aerospace, which was Hamilton Sunstrand. You have a lot of smart people in this area. We don't need a consultant. That's my uh, uh, professional opinion. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else that would like to approach the council a second time? third time thank you mr. Janitis I declare public communications closed okay next counselor communications uh, counselor Mangini thank you just have a couple comments I want to applaud um, Cindy Guerrera from our social services department I <laughs> did speak with a couple of um, fifth graders and they uh, were very pleased with the dance I do want to thank our town manager for being the chaperone <clears throat> and I do want to make a suggestion that perhaps going forward we can enlist volunteers council people board of ed people people that serve on committees to volunteer some time to help um, do the chaperoning it would be fun and I think that it would help encourage, you know, more, I'll look at Ellen's laughing over there, it would encourage uh, more young people uh, through their parents to get involved in these activities. So I just wanted to say thank you for that, because I did get some good feedback after I did some investigating myself, so thank you. Um, I do want to congratulate the loaves and fishes. Uh, you know, Maya's doing a bang up job and her staff and board. And um, thanks to Murray and uh, Priscilla Brayson for all the years that they put forward in building that um, dynamic organization. <clears throat> because as one guest did mention, at any given time, it could be any person that is in need of a meal. And we're very, very, very fortunate in our town to have that operation. So thank you to all those volunteers and uh, staff and board on that Loaves and Fishes team. Um, I do want to also mention that on May 22nd, which is a Sunday, uh, between the hours of 1 and 3, we're having a day of reflection. It will be held here at the town green the purpose is to show solidarity with the people of Ukraine. Residents of all denominations, all churches, all religions are invited to attend. 
local spiritual leaders will be participating in this humanitarian effort. All who attend will be invited to make a Ukrainian flag to take home as a reminder of the day. And if you require or are looking for more information, you can contact me or Marie Pisner uh, for those details. So it should be a good event, non-political, non-denominational, but simply to bring our community together in solidarity for support of others. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Councilor Ungar. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to invite the community. Uh, this Wednesday, May 5th, is the National Day of Prayer. And out on the gazebo at 12 noon, there's going to be the community gathered there to offer a community prayer. So everyone's invited, 12 noon. Okay, thank you. And uh, Councilor Finger. No, go ahead, Doug. And then Councilor Pizner. Um I have a couple questions, and I, I'm assuming I can do it through my Councilor Communications, but uh, it has to go to the town attorney. Should I wait for that, his report, then ask him my questions, or can I ask him now? You could, you could ask him now. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm all for uh, proclaiming June as Pride Month, but I don't know what happened with the Supreme Court ruling. I, I don't. I would like to know what it was. What what occurs? Are we are we violating something? Are we not? Are we okay? Can we go forward? Um, I agree that, and I'm pretty upset that they wouldn't um, Boston would them put a cross up on a flag. Um, I have Jesus' cross tattooed on my back, along with the Virgin Mary. So I'm kind of upset about that. So um, I'd like to know what's happening because I, I don't know if I can vote fairly not knowing exactly what we're doing. Thank you. I, uh, I, Mr. Mayor, through you, I am prepared to address the issues from today's Supreme Court ruling. Probably makes sense to do it in the context when that resolution comes up would be my sense of it, if that's okay. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right, so that's gonna give me time to think. I think, I think I'm gonna think. Does that make sense? Okay. <laughs> Because um, I know my family and my very close friends would be very upset with me if I uh, didn't support them. Um, I don't know what happened at the planning zone uh, meeting uh, with Kelly and Matt. Um, is that something that we should be aware of if they aren't doing things right? I know we don't really oversee them. We only put people in their places there. So, I mean, I don't think that we can oversee them and make them change their minds or something if something happens or if something goes wrong. That's not our responsibility, correct? Okay, that's what I want to know. Thank you. Um, okay, thank you. Councilor Pisner. Um, I had the great pleasure of doing a ride along um, with, a, uh, with Officer Connor Wiley. Um, and I just have to say, it was one of the most eye opening evenings I've had in a very, very long time. Um, you know, Chief Fox said to me it would be, and it was. Um, and, and I don't think. Connor purposely went to every single call because I was in the car. I just think it happened to be a very busy evening. Um, you know, I had the pleasure of going to an accident with the sirens going and me holding on to the cruiser like, and you know, saying a Hail Mary. Um, but the one thing that really impacted me was at, uh, we, were, we were just about um, to go back to have his break. And so he said, you know, I'm gonna swing through a restaurant, get something to eat, and I said, that's fine. And he's got the computer and he's doing something on Hazard Avenue, and then the next thing I hear him talking, and he said, I hope it's okay with you, but we're gonna pull this car over in front of me. And I said, yeah, of course it's okay with me. He pulled into the parking lot, you know, put the sirens on, the, the, the car pulled into the parking lot, and for a split second when he got out of the car, I have to say, I saw in real time how brave our men and women are who get out of the car and walk to a strange car not knowing what they're going to encounter on the other side. And the night before, they had done a bust where they found a ghost gun and drugs and money, so it kept like rolling through my mind. And I was so happy that the gentleman cooperated and it, it was a violation and they came the tow truck and all that and another officer came to help. But I have to say my heart stopped for that moment. So I just want to say thank you 
to all the men and women, not only in our town, but across our country, who every day put that uniform on, wear that badge, and are brave enough to keep us safe. Um, I got back to the station, Officer Held gave me a great tour, and then I had quite a long conversation with Detective Callahan about um, drugs and, and you know courts, and, and it, it was just a wonderful evening. So I really, really want to thank the Enfield PD for allowing me that opportunity. Um, and, and again, just thank you to all our men and women that, that make us safe in this town. Um, and I would be remiss if I didn't give a shout out to Loaves and Fishes. They did an absolutely phenomenal open house and they've done such a beautiful job inside there. It, it does not look like a soup kitchen any longer. It is beautiful, absolutely beautiful, because I used to work at the St. Andrews. This is certainly a step up and no one walking in there will feel as though they're going to a soup kitchen. They're gonna feel like they're going to a very inviting restaurant and that's just lovely. So thank you to them. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other counselor comments? Uh, <clears throat> counselor Ludwig. Thank you, can you hear me? Yes. So two quick questions through the mayor to the to town attorney. Can, can he weigh in on the uh, closing, uh, closing of the, of the public, public hearing at the planning and zoning. zoning. Though I don't know, well, we, we don't have control of them, but I think he should, should be able to weigh, weigh in whether that public hearing was closed. If he hasn't seen it, maybe he can review it. It was, it was closed, closed correctly. correctly. I think that's in his purview. And then second, again, through the mayor, the town attorney, have we heard anything on the courthouse of Enfield? Is any movement whether it be opened or not? Just curious. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Are there any other counselor comments? I have a couple. Um, first of all, uh, I attended uh, a CROG meeting, the Capital Region Council of Government. Uh, we met last week, and part of the meeting uh, that was discussed were the updates and plans for the Connecticut Rail projects, and specifically uh, Enfield. And plans are moving forward with the project, and the report was given by Adam Fox from the Connecticut Department of Transportation, and plans are moving forward. RFPs have been issued, and, you know, full progress ahead. So we're, we're pretty pleased uh, about that, and I will give uh, periodic updates uh, when the Transportation Committee does meet. Also, uh, this past week, along with myself, uh, the town manager, uh, Ellen Zapusasu, and our social service director, <laughs> Cindy uh, Jagari, we are part of a, the newly formed Mental Health uh, Awareness Committee. And we had our opening meeting last week at Asnunta Community College, and we are meeting again this week coming up. And the group analyzed data from the 2021 Enfield survey. Uh, so we're gathering information. Uh, it's data on youth substance uh, abuse and related behaviors that deal with all of this. We're identifying priority substances and priority mental health issues uh, and how COVID-19 impacted uh, our youth. So we uh, not only substance abuse, but emotional uh, health. So we will be analyzing that further uh, this week. Uh, also, um, you know, I'm not piggybacking on, on anybody uh, in regard to all the different happenings that uh, were going on this week, uh, but I do want to just give a quick shout out to Officer Austin and Officer Roach uh, for their work in that uh, grade five dance. I did stop in, I did make an appearance, uh, and it was great to see the activity uh, at the youth center. We haven't seen that in years, and uh, it's only gonna get bigger and better. So thank you for that. Um, also, uh, I was asked to just make this quick announcement uh, from the uh, Hartford Foundation. Uh, if anybody's interested in joining the Enfield Greater Together Community Fund Advisory Committee. Uh, applications are at the Enfield Public Library at so, or the Social Service Department. 
and the selection committee is looking for Enfield residents to be part of this advisory to committee to facilitate grant processes for the Hartford Foundation. So uh, I was asked to make that announcement tonight. So I am making it loud and clear. And um, one final thing that I, that I do want to mention, actually I might have two. Um, our friends over at the Opera House Players, their play next to normal um, for the next three weekends, Friday, Saturday, at 8 o'clock, uh, the plays start, and then Sunday's uh, time is 2 p.m. And the first one up is next to normal. And this one here is a uh, shadowed uh, presentation featuring both speaking and signing actors, creating not only a vibrant and uh, production, but a powerful musical, uh, which will be accessible to the deaf community, which is a first in, in the area. So. Uh, so if you have the opportunity over the next three weekends, uh, go out and see some uh, fantastic uh, actors and actresses performing there. Um, on Wednesday, the town council, along with the town manager, the assistant town manager, and all the department directors, we have been working diligently on this year's budget. All right. And uh, I know a few of you came up and did discuss with this, but uh, we are working hard for potential budget cuts and deferments. We are going to do the best that we can do to come up with a balanced budget for everybody so that we do not have these fiscal constraints, especially on our, our seniors and for all residents. So we will be uh, working very hard to accommodate that. All right. Okay, next. Town manager report. Good evening, Mayor and members of the council. Uh, just a few quick things. First, to reiterate the budget deliberations begin on Wednesday. Uh, Assistant Town Manager Belinda and I did have a very robust staff meeting last week following your meeting. And there are already ideas coming forward about deferment as well as some efficiencies and some potential cost savings that we will be bringing forward. I'd like to remind everybody that each mill is worth $3.5 million roughly. And so for every mill reduction that we're gonna be looking at, it's gonna be $3.584 million. So if we were to reduce it to a point where there would be zero impact, uh, that number right now is $10 million. So I'm just trying to put that in terms of the, um, the severity of what's happened. I don't disagree with a lot of what was said at the public hearing last week as well as tonight, uh, but we are facing challenging times. We are also facing challenging times in terms of the public service. Government service has changed and is really rotating through um, a bunch of different service models. And the federal and state support is differing. It's much different than it was 10 years ago, even 20 years ago. So being able to use the ARPA funds that this town has received both on the Board of Education side as well as the municipal side is really a stopgap measure, but it's also one designed to do long-term strategy projects. It is intended to be used in a way that benefits taxpayers over the long term. And there's language specifically in ARPA that requires a town to not use it for tax reduction, for pension obligations, for deferred debt, it's spelled out very clearly in the ARPA piece. We are in the process of working with our uh, web providers in order to load more information onto the website and create a specific ARPA page so that people can track the projects, see how the dollars are being allocated, and understand a little bit more about what this federal legislation is. Um, there's a lot of uh, people ahead of us apparently, so it's been a little slower than I would have liked to have that new page designed as uh, part of our website, but we are working diligently and hopefully that will be up shortly. May is also National Law Enforcement Month, so to kind of continue what Councillor Pisner was referencing, um, there are a significant amount of line of duty deaths every year in the country. And luckily for us, that doesn't really happen here, but it could. Uh, so the ceremony piece, uh, what happens in Washington and what is observed throughout the country during National 
Police Week, which starts next week, uh, is, is a very sobering idea. We have a, a very big responsibility to our police officers, EMS workers, anybody that's frontline to equip them with the tools and education and training that they need in order to successfully do their job. Again, there's been probably no larger impacted public policy area between public education and police work over the last probably 10 to 20 years. Everything has changed. We've moved from a very much militia format to de-escalation and uh, working with our, our populations in order to create community policing initiatives. All of this requires not only a shift in mindset, but it also requires a shift in resources. And I think that Enfield has done very well in supporting those public safety initiatives, which in turn supports the entire community. And as we are celebrating this month, I did just wanna take a, a quick moment, and I know that the mayor mentioned it. We did have community policing present at the fifth grade dance on Friday night, which I think was a comfort for a lot of nervous parents who were sending off you know, their, their younger children to a, a dance for the, probably the first time. It was great to see the kids interacting in a social way, especially after the impact of COVID. Uh, but the police officer was one of our community policing, the DJ. So that was great to see. They also led a cleanup for our efforts last week with the clean sweep in Thompsonville. Um, they are very active with a lot of the community groups and uh, the Enfield Together Coalition. And I also think that the drug take back day, according to Chief Fox, yielded over 133 pounds of returned and unused medications, which is now out of people's medicine cabinets out of the drawers in people's houses and, and sadly oftentimes we unwillingly become our own children's relatives neighbors family members drug dealers because people will come into homes and actually rummage for these types of pain relief anything that you can get out of the, the mainstream is a benefit to any community so kudos to the police officers for doing that as well but most importantly they've listened to uh, some of the concerns that have been expressed here and last week we had the Department of Motor vehicles in town over the traffic concerns with trucks so obviously that's been a hot topic for the past few months people are concerned about what it is now and what it potentially is going to look like in the future so I did ask for the report and some of you may have already seen it because it was on um, the police department's Facebook page but having DMV in town uh, the highway notwithstanding which increases our truck traffic they were recently on Shaker Road and Moody Road, and they had a significant amount of enforcement, which included 11 failed inspections, three trucks placed out of service, two drivers placed out of service, one commercial vehicle was towed, nine infractions were issued for over $1,400, and there were two written warnings. So some of these violations included unregistered trailers, seatbelt violations, cell phone violations, failure to stop for traffic, control signals, operation without commercial operator's licenses, defective wheels, overweight violations, and others. So from a public safety standpoint, I think it's really important for everyone to know that you identified a concern, you acted with the police department and asked for them to de develop strategies to fix it. This is an ongoing process, but once a community is known as having DMV enforcement in conjunction with their police departments, it gives people pause. So the cut through traffic tends to be eliminated because they know that this is something that's being checked and watched. And so the, the fear factor for, for the public safety is hopefully gonna be ameliorated a little bit by having this presence. And you can ask to be put on the rotation, which we've done. So we will see DMV truck enforcement back here in Enfield, hopefully at least on a quarterly basis in various areas. I do believe that our assistant town manager has a brief report and then we'll allow um, Attorney Talberg to address the Boston uh, court decision. Okay, thank you. Good evening. I just want to um, allay anyone's fears or concerns regarding this purchasing consultant that we recently just hired. Uh, she comes to us with over 25 years of certified purchasing managing, manager credentials. She graduated magna cum laude with a 3.7 GPA. She worked retired from Meriden. She is in West Haven for that reason, to help Meriden because of the uh, quagmire that Meriden found themselves. She's highly credentialed, and that's why they hired her. And she's been working with uh, town attorneys from various municipalities 
municipalities throughout the state of Connecticut to come up with the boilerplate ARPA language that is so specific to using ARPA funding to make sure we have the model uh, RFP language as we go with the bid. She's going to prevent us from becoming the next West Haven. I'm very comfortable in hiring uh, that we hired her. I've already been working with her. She's making sure we check the I, uh, cross the I's and dot the, dot the I's, cross the T's. Um, and she will probably be training us on how we procure uh, under ARPA funding. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Attorney Talberg. Um, yeah, if I may uh, respond first, Councillor uh, Ludwig had two questions about um, the PZC hearing, and I, I wouldn't want to prejudice uh, the rights of the PZC if there are any um, disputes that arise from the public hearing, but uh, it's my understanding that if there's a defect, it's a curable defect, and that it will be addressed um, possibly with a, a re-notice of a public hearing, and steps have been taken to ensure that something like that doesn't happen again. Um, so I, I trust that suffices as an answer for now. And with regard to the courthouse's closing, I don't have any personal knowledge about that, but I think the town manager may. Um, yes, I've been keeping track of that with some of the state contacts that I have. Uh, some of you may be aware that the courthouse in Bristol closed about 18 months ago, and there's a significant process that goes through when that happens. Um, so I did ask those contacts what was the status of Enfield, and right now there is nothing in, on paper that Enfield is going to close. The problem seems to be as maybe still a little pandemic issue, but mostly staffing issue, and how they're going to bring additional staffing back to open an additional courthouse when right now there is judge issues and a bunch of other staffing issues that are affecting it. So we're going to keep checking on it. I, I call every couple of months, and I'm probably due to call again once the budget's resolved, and I'll keep everybody apprised of that. Okay. Thank you. Um, and so, Mr. Mayor, with regard to the, um, the decision that came down from the Supreme Court today, I I'm happy to address it. I think it might okay. make more sense when you're having a debate, because I, I suspect you're going to have a discussion about the resolution, um, or I can address it now, whatever your pre preference is. You can is. address it now. Okay, so if I may then. Um, today, the Supreme Court um, issued a decision entitled uh, Harold Schertleff versus City of Boston. And this is uh, an opinion that we have been expecting. We've been watching it. Um, when the issue first came up, I forget how many meetings ago, about the pride flag, we conducted the legal research to determine um, whether that would be permissible if there was such a display, uh, whether it would expose the town to an unending stream of flags that would have to be displayed as some speakers have suggested. And I'll tell you, um, as town attorney, I, I don't think that is the case. And I think, in fact, the uh, rationale for having a resolution from this council, if it's the will of this council to display the pride flag, is entirely consistent with the reasoning of the Supreme Court decision that came down today for a few reasons, and they go like this. First, there are, this debate or issue um, um, concerns the intersection of two concepts, two First Amendment concepts, that is public forum and government speech. When the government creates a forum for free speech, the First Amendment prevents the government from discriminating between speech. So for example, when this council makes the, le the lectern available or the microphone available for anyone to come up and speak, the government can't pick and choose and discriminate which views it wants to hear. The the town council doesn't have to afford this opportunity to the citizens, but it does in this public forum. Many towns don't do that. It's not a requirement, but it's a tradition that's been well accepted in, in Enfield. That type of public forum is different from government speech. And I'll quote from Justice Breyer's decision released today. When the government speaks for itself, the First Amendment does not demand airtime for all views. After all, the government must be able to, quote, promote a program, close quote, or, quote, espouse a policy, close quote, in order to function. So the difference between what is uh, in your packet tonight, where there's a resolution by which 
this council is going to decide yay or nay whether to support the pride flag is different from what happened in the Supreme Court case because in the Supreme Court case of Shurtleff, it wasn't the government itself speaking. It was the government telling a group that wanted to raise a flag that they weren't allowed to do that. If it's the will of this council to engage in government speech and promote a certain cause, it's well within your province to do that. And if the next council doesn't want to similarly espouse that view next year or next term, they don't have to. The same could have happened with the last council. If the last council before November 2021 wanted to pass a resolution to support a specific flag, that was their province and their choice to do so. Um, so my read as your town attorney is that this decision um, is consistent with and supports the notion that this council, if it wished or wishes tonight to approve that resolution about the pride flag, it would be entirely consistent and it wouldn't uh, with this decision and it would not offend the First Amendment. Okay, thank, thank you. Okay. Uh, Councillor Ludwig, do you have a question? Uh, no, I don't. No, don't. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, report of special committees of the council. Uh, we, we do have a uh, report from DPW subcommittee. Uh, Councillor Hopkins. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, along with Councillor Finger, uh, Ms. Sapusazu, um, Mr. Belinda, uh, Mr. Um, uh, Mr. Nunes and Ken Boulette uh, met to discuss uh, some issues. We have three that I think deserve some att council attention. I'll start with the least complicated one. Um, we considered uh, amending the town facilities use policy. Uh, the issue that was that precipitated this was that um, it seemed like not a lot of folks were using uh, renting town rooms uh, for a variety of things, and the suggestion was to remove the usage fee for that as long as it's within business hours. So the language change specifically <coughs> would be to remove the language that calls for uh, rental amounts and to give uh, the Director of Public Works discretion to um, simply accept applications. Uh, he could charge a fee if someone is asking to use a town hall room during on a Saturday, some time when uh, custodian or other uh, town employee would be needed. Um, so that's that's the first part of that. Additionally, um, there is a change to remove the rental option for uh, the field house at Shaker Fields. Now uh, we're still allowing allowing people to use that, but not charging that fee for it. Again, to encourage uh, people to use these facilities because they are taxpayer uh, buildings. So um, we would still have the uh, director of public works would still have discretion to uh, grant or deny those applications. Um, and the last change for um, for that facilities use policy would be uh, removing some cleaning up some of the language which lists all of the um, f uh, fee exempt athletic organizations. Um, I believe this change would require a resolution. I do have one here submitted to me. I believe by the town manager. Um, I, I don't believe anybody else has read it. I, I think it would be understandable if you did want to read that before voting on it. Uh, my suggestion would be to consider this um, uh, on number 13, uh, any other business proper to come before this meeting. Um, so that's, that's issue one. Uh, issue two is relating to tipper barrels. There is a um, subset of properties in town um, that are mixed residential and commercial and um, they don't have room to put dumpsters on those properties. Many, many of them are in Thompsonville. Um, our current uh, solid waste and recycling policy doesn't allow them enough tipper barrels. So if you have a, a one such property with six units, they might only be able to get four. So the change that we're suggesting is to allow them to purchase tags to get up to that total amount because they are unable to fit a dumpster in that section. So the, the language change that we're looking for here in the solid waste and recycling policy is um, 
to allow up to four annual tags for gray tipper barrels at no charge uh, for commercial properties. Uh, commercial property owners may purchase up to one additional tag per unit, uh, and that's at a fee to be determined by the Director of Public Works. Um, I have also received a resolution from the town manager for this. Uh, there is, I believe, a typo in that. Um, I think ultimately you should say, for the purpose of the section that I just described, a unit is, def as, is defined as a property with mixed residential and commercial use that is reasonably unable to fit a dumpster on that lot. Um, so we, we may not, I would probably not bring this forward to vote on it tonight, given that typo, but I did want to let everybody know about that because there are some properties in town that have this issue and we want to be able to manage the waste effectively um, so that we don't have bags ending up, ending up in places where they shouldn't be. Uh, lastly, uh, we discussed a policy for um, buying back tipper barrels. Uh, this has been mentioned a couple times before. Uh, this, I believe, would not require a resolution tonight. Um, I would later on uh, move for a policy change directing the town manager to implement uh, the following policy, and that's that barrels uh, purchased, um, purchased in the last two years, specifically with an end date on July 2020, uh, would be able to be um, purchased back by the town uh, at a, at a uh, pro rata rate. So that's, that's quite a lot here, but I do want to give those updates. So my suggestion is consider that the first resolution tonight and consider that policy change. But I do think um, that typo should be addressed before the second one can be considered tonight. Uh, okay, first of all, uh, Councillor Finger. Thank you. Um, Councillor Hop Hopkins, um, maybe we should consider doing that one next meeting because you've got two people who aren't here. Uh, Councilor Ludwig and Councilor Despard, uh, they won't have the opportunity to read it before the 13th uh, number. And I, you know, I, of course, I'm right with you, right behind you, but I don't think it's fair to the ones that are watching from TV land because um, they can't see it, they can't read it, so they don't have time to, to digest everything that, that possibly we can do here. So I, I would probably make a motion if I, were, I, don't, have, if I don't have to, um, that we wait on that one along with the other ones, in my opinion. Thank you. Councilor Ludwig. Yeah, I was just going to agree with uh, Councilor Finger. Listen, we can't be having resolutions on the night of a meeting and then voting on it. This should be part of the public packet on Friday. I'm not saying there's anything, but we can't be, you know, pulling stuff the night of the meeting and expect to vote on it. Sorry. I'm sure I will support this, but I think we need to see it in the packet, be able to, re to review it, ask questions. And, um, you know, again, I, I don't have a copy of the resolution. I can't vote on it. Councillor Mangini. So I also think the question, who owns, when you're talking about Shaker Field, who owns the, the bathrooms there? Is that the town or is that the, the, the um, soccer organization? The town owns everything, Mike. Okay. okay. The town owns Thank you. it. Yep. Councillor Mangini. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hopkins, for the overview. I will not vote on anything that I don't have in front of me to review. I'm doing my due diligence. I need to see the changes. I want to see what we have and what we're looking to change, number one. Number two, I'm apprehensive about giving all this discretion to the director of public works because not that it is the current director, but let's say there's another director. I don't feel comfortable maybe the language is not in front of me and i need to see that and then thirdly um i at, at this point i again i want to see the language buying back tipper barrels for those that purchased them in the last two years that that's a good uh, notion but what about those of us that purchased these things years ago so we're giving to one group, but we're not addressing the other group. That, that's a concern for me. So again, if we're not gonna to vote tonight, which I would support not voting tonight, we'll have time maybe to discuss prior to a vote, which I'd be comfortable with. Thank you. Okay, uh, town manager, please. 
So we'll do whatever the council wishes on this, but we did make an executive decision to include it in the packets because it is somewhat of a timely issue with the 40 to 50 properties that have approached well, actually, some of them have come here and explained about the hardship that they've had with their mixed-use properties, but they have all reported in to Public Works about the difficulties they're having with the solid waste policy. So what the staff has done is isolated those 40 to 50 properties. We've discussed this for a couple of months. The best way to do it in the estimation of staff, which was discussed at the committee meeting, is that there is a certain level of discretion because not any of these two properties are the same. Uh, you have very densely built neighborhoods. You have some very interesting scenarios, and we can't address everything with a blanket policy. So the Public Works Subcommittee has been really kind of discussing this about which way to approach this for a long time. In some cases, no policy is a better policy, so that now the public work staff can uh, go out and address from a very customer service-based approach to say, okay, this property has these attributes. It, they have no easements. They have they, they literally sit on the building envelope for this property. There's nowhere for a dumpster. There's three apartments, a restaurant, and you know maybe an outbuilding for storage for, for a commercial use. They should be able to, and, and they should be able to use their judgment professionally to, uh, to help that property owner come to a solution. So we can do this on May 16th, but it's only pushing out the solution for those 40 to 50 property owners that have approached and asked for consideration to Public Works another two weeks. It also will continue to delay the full implementation of the new solid waste policy, which is not a problem, but just so you know, we are very much gingerly going about this. So there's not a lot of enforcement right now because we're waiting until everything is settled and everyone has been heard and everything has been adjudicated through these, you know, um, unique situations. So there is that. Um, the policies, I'm not sure about the resolutions, but the policies were sent out on Friday with my report. And that's the best we, we could do in terms of the short notice. But hopefully all of you saw those and, and they were attached. If not, I do apologize for that. But these are clarifications brought forward from staff in order to solve these situations as quickly as possible for those taxpayers who are looking for assistance. OK, thank you. So can we make a motion um, to, to follow through with this or <clears throat> with, the policy with, with the policy changes? Can we can we have a motion for the policy changes? You, you can't. Excuse me. Uh, Councillor Hopkins. Uh, thank you. I, just, yes. I did want to clarify for these three items uh, through, you know, through, through the mayor to the town attorney. Would they need resolutions? I just received these today. We had some discussion uh, at the prior at the the, uh, the meeting this week, the DPW subcommittee meeting. Um, I would like to clarify that. I think it's totally reasonable to see the language before voting on. I think it's a bare minimum. Um, and then I think, that lastly, if we are, if we were to direct the um, town manager to implement this barrel buyback program that was discussed, would that need to be a resolution? I'm sorry, Councillor Hopkins. I'm I'm a little confused. I I'm looking at resolutions that these just came out today were not in the packet. How about? Um, off the top of my head, I. Yeah, I I, I I'm I'm candidly I'm not quite sure, Councillor Hopkins. That's all right. I mean, I think that okay. that kind of answers my question. Yeah. We I think reasonably should wait. I mean, I, I would not feel comfortable moving forward without guidance on that. Um, that's all I have. OK. Um, I think I'm going to make the, the recommendation that uh, we, you know, we have our discussion on this, but we um, make the, the motion to uh, t table this and then move forward with and, until everybody has all their paperwork in front of them. They can take a look at it. And then on our next meeting on May 16th, we can make the vote on this. OK. Uh, co co Councillor Ungar? We're I was just going to okay. recommend that. that all right, good. Uh, Councillor Ludwig? Yeah, final think discussion. You need an Hi, I don't, I don't even think, think you need an amendment. amendment. There's, there's nothing on the agenda. agenda. They're just, just doing a presentation. presentation. So there's nothing. I don't, I don't think, think there's anything to, uh, to 
the okay, table well, it's not on, we're, there's no yeah. resolution on, in our, you know, on the agenda. And also, too, yeah. for next meeting, as we, if we're going to talk about all this, especially the, the barrel buyback, I think people need to understand the cost of recycling has already gone up since we last did this. But there's a lot of moving parts here that I think need to be discussed in public and need to be part of this overall conversation. So again, yeah, I don't I think, think from the Roberts Rules of Order you have to do anything because it wasn't. There's Correct. No, there's no, there's no resolution on the agenda. We we will move forward with this, and we will um, at, at our next meeting uh, discuss this. Okay. All right. There is no unfinished business. Number twelve, new business uh, under a consent agenda. There is none. Uh, 12B appointments, uh, town council appointment, first for the Enfield Beautification Committee. <clears throat> the term of office for Megan Mosier expired on 12-31-2021. The nomination for a replacement is Marilyn Sorensen for a term until 12-31-2024. Is there a motion to pr approve? Uh, Councilor Mangini, a second. Uh, Councilor Pisner, all in favor, say yay. 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 Okay. Uh, opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Ten yays. Next, prison <clears throat> term liaison committee. The term of office for Steve Nemitz expired on. 228-2022. The nomination for his replacement will be Michael Arnone for a term until 1231-2024. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Councilor Mangini, a second. Deputy Mayor Sakala, all in favor say yay. 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 Opposed? Yay. Motion carries. Uh, Ten yays. C, uh, town manager appointed, council approved. There are none. Uh, D, appointments P and Z appointed, council approved. None. And we will move on to E. <clears throat> the resolution proclaiming June is Pride Month. I will read the resolution. The resolution proclaiming June is Pride Month, whereas the Town Council of the Town of Enfield, Connecticut, welcomes and encourages diversity and inclusion within our community. And whereas celebrating Pride Month raises awareness and provides support and advocacy for the LGBTQ uh, community and is an opportunity to become educated, engage in dialogue, strengthen alliances and build a better Enfield. And whereas the Pride Month is dedicated to uplifting the LGBT voices, a celebration of the human spirit and of human rights, and is an opportunity for everyone to embrace and celebrate our differences as the things that make us special. And whereas each color of the six color flag has its own meaning, Red is symbolic of life, orange is symbolic of healing, yellow represents sunshine, green represents nature, blue represents harmony, and purple represents spirit. And whereas displaying the rainbow flag throughout the month of June further symbolizes the town of Enfield's commitment and celebration of diversity and support for the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender community, and is a symbol of our unity and an affirmation of the belief that we are better together. Now, therefore, be resolved, the Town Council hereby proclaims June as Pride Month to celebrate the great diversity of Enfield residents. Be it further resolved, the Town Council urges all residents and businesses to celebrate and build a culture of inclusiveness and acceptance during the month of June and every month. Be it further resolved, that the town of Enfield will begin the implementation of flying or displaying the rainbow flag at the town hall starting on June 1st and ending June 30th of this year and every year hereafter to inspire equity, create alliances, and celebrate diversity. <clears throat> 
prepared by the town attorney's office, date prepared April 27th, 2022. So moved. Deputy Mayor Sakala, and second by Councilor Santanella. Is there any discussion on the floor? Councilor Pisner. I have spoken to Councilor Santanella in, leth, in length regarding this issue um, because this is a very, very difficult vote for me. As a resident, Marie Pisner, I am not against flying the pride flag for the month of June. But however, tonight I am not voting as a resident. I am voting as Marie Pisner, Councilor at Large and I am representing this entire community. As a community, every resident has a say as to what flag or banner flies at this town hall. I did some research and I found that in the past, Enfield has denied two flags. In 2012, the National Donate to Life flag was denied and in 2016, the Mexican flag. Currently, Enfield does not have a flag policy in place that clearly defines what groups or organizations may fly their flag. Enfield needs a policy that can be referenced to ensure that all residents, groups, and organizations are treated fairly. Mm -hmm. Until that time, I believe Enfield is in jeopardy of a lawsuit based on the First Amendment. I appreciate what our attorney said tonight, and I have been following the Supreme Court on this, and I actually reference it in my next paragraph. And, and Boston right now, quite honestly, is scrambling to put in a flag policy. There are other towns in the state of Connecticut that have some great flag policies, both for and against, but they're great policies. As a counselor, I took an oath to work for all residents and to represent them fairly, as well as a fiduciary responsibility. So tonight, for that reason and only that reason, I have to vote no on this. Thank you. Any other comments? Counselor Ungar. <clears throat> So if I understand the Supreme Court's ruling, they ruled that you can fly the flag, but you can't deny others through the mayor to the town attorney. Is that correct? Um, Councilor Ungar, it's far more complicated than that. And okay, I was the, just trying to boil it down. Yeah, no, okay. it's far more complicated. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm still going to read my notes as prepared. <clears throat> uh, when I think of the town hall, I ask myself, what purpose does it serve? What place does it hold in our community? Local government satisfies civic responsibilities such as education, public safety, fire, medical, parks and rec, housing, and public works. The topic at hand, celebrating Pride Month in June, is a very interesting conversation. I have no objection to people celebrating this, none. I have close friends and relatives that reside in the LGBTQ community. I support residents that show their passion with flags on their homes. Examples, all the sports flags, the Red Sox, the Yankees, the pride flags, all, all of them. Uh, nationalities, military, state of Connecticut, Na Nassau, Rotary. There's a whole list of them. I see them everywhere. And thankfully, we live in a, in a country that provides us the liberties and freedom to express our support for our groups of interest. However, we don't fly Red Sox flags and Yankee flags from the town hall. I'll just throw that in. <clears throat> Recently, the Board of Education removed the word Christmas from our school calendar, citing that it didn't include some people's beliefs and they didn't want to offend anyone. However, statistics say that 98% of Enfield residents celebrate Christmas in one way or another, and yet it was removed. So I find some of these resolutions and how the statistics are being used are very incongruent. I've had many residents speak to me saying they object to a pride flag or banner to be displayed at the town hall. They say it's not government's role to promote or endorse a particular lifestyle. And that's exactly what we'd be doing. 
the town hall represents all residences. On citydata.com, the LGBTQ population in town is less than 1%. How does this receive a priority over other groups whose numbers may be larger? It's listed as 1%. Other groups are going to want their flags and banners flown. And if we don't display their flags, we open ourselves up to dis discrimination claims. We could be putting our community at a significant financial risk. So who are we going to pick and choose? Keep in mind that there are only 12 months in a year. There's one flag to me that truly symbolizes human spirit, unity, inclusion, diversity, and freedom. And that flag has 50 stars on it and 13 stripes. That being said, I'll not support this resolution, but don't misinterpret my vote. It's not a personal attack against the LGBTQ community. I love that community with my friends and families uh, participate in that. And however, this issue is not how we feel about them. It's about how we feel about our community and our government building. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Mangini. Thank you. Just very briefly, I, um, with all due respect, take a different uh, view on this. Um, uh, the resolution, the first paragraph, we talk about diversity and inclusion. And we are here, elected officials, to uh, support diversity and inclusion. People are not a percent. People are people. And for that reason, I'm definitely going to support the proclamation. If other groups come forward, then we have to look at their requests on their own merit. I more than happily will support our um, you know, resolution for Pride uh, Month and, and raising the Pride flag. I think it's an honor that we're in a position where we can do this. This is America. Let's respect all people. Thank you. Are there any other comments? <clears throat> Councilor Finger. I'll make it quick. I'm still not sure about what you said. Uh, you have to put, for me, you have to put in simple mind, a uh, simple talk. Is If we do this, is this going to open us up to any other groups, any group? Uh, and what was mentioned was you know, neo-Nazis, anybody else, that they'll have the right to have a flag hung here in Enfield at the town green. That's really a two-part question. Are, are you going to be... Um are you going to have persons who uh, make requests of you? I, that's beyond my control. But does this pass constitutional muster? And are you within your right to approve this as your town attorney? I'm quite confident that you are. Okay. And now when we had our discussions about this, I made it a few times asked, where is these flags? If we agree to any flag to be hung, where are they going to be hung? Because... I said that I would not support any flag other than the American flag, our state flag, and the uh, POW MII flag on our front lawn. So I had to know where these flags would be hung. You said you told me that they wouldn't be hung up there. I, I, I support this 100%, but I want to know where or possibly where we're going to put these. Are we going to give them their own poll? I'm okay with that too. I just, but me, in my heart, and I've asked this question many times from everybody on this board, where are we going to hang them? I can try to answer that for you, Doug, because we've answered this question, and we said we were going to hang them, most likely, or suspend them from the town hall. Nothing is going on that flagpole with the American flag, and we have made that clear. Thank you very much. Councilor Ludwig. So I'll be brief. Again, again, just, just want, to want to go, go back, back to the town, town attorney. attorney. This, this resolution, resolution is constitutional. Is you made that. But what happens if something, like, again, you're not answering the question if someone else wants, wants to do it? If us denying that, is that unconstitutional? That's, that's the question. The question. All right. So first off, um, there wasn't a group that came forward and made this application. This is generated from the council. And so the focus of my analysis right, right. is this is the council's speech. And so that's, it, it would be irrelevant if someone came forward and, and wanted to um, make an application. That's not this council engaging in government speech. Well, right, right, right. Well, wasn't it at the 
her, the, the whole thing denying the flag, the flag in Boston. Boston. They, that, yeah, that was the government, the city of the Boston, Boston denied it. Uh, you, you, you're not comparing apples uh, to apples. What, what the, the factual pattern up in Boston is that they had 284 flags in a row. Every time someone came forward and they had a process, they approved everyone except they made a, um, uh, a decision based on the content of a flag to deny it. And so that was public forum speech, not like the government speech that we have with this revo resolution. So, so you're, you're saying, saying we, we should, should develop, develop a policy? policy? Is that, Is that government, government speech, speech in your view? N no, I'm, I'm saying there's, there's, um, this is just the government engaging in speech. There's not an application of a policy. It's entirely distinct factually from the facts of the Boston case, Shertloff. And you're, and you're, and you're, and you're saying, saying on the record, record this is a constitutional, constitutional resolution? resolution. I have several times now, Councillor Ludwig, yes. Just want to make sure, make sure you're clear. clear. Yeah, yeah, some, some of your, your answers, answers have not been completely, completely clear, clear, so I just, so want, I just want to be clear. clear. Thank, you. Thank you. Sheila, roll call, please. Mayor Crisati. Four. Councillor Despard. Four. Four. Councillor Finger. Four. Councillor Hopkins. Four. Councillor Ludwick. Four. Councillor Mangini. Four. Councillor Pisner. Against. Councillor Santanella. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Against. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Four. That's eight in favor, two against, and no abstentions. Item F. Discussion resolution resolution to approve amendment number four to the contract between the town of Enfield and Wooded and Kern with regard to the berm at the water pollution control facility. Uh, before we begin, I would like to ask Attorney Talberg uh, to briefly summarize where we are with this project, please. Sure. To keep it real simple on a high level, uh, we've been before you um, several times with regard to the um, water pollution control upgrade. Uh, we're currently on an extension to complete that project by December 31 of 2022. That's already a one-year extension. And the last piece of the puzzle to complete the project is the installation of an earthen berm that has a sheet pile in it. And because uh, part of the land where this berm is going to be located is on property owned by Amtrak, the town needed to enter into a license agreement with Amtrak for the uh, use of that property. Because that area is close to the railroad right of way, Amtrak is um, understandably very careful with the construction activities they allow in that area. And as a result of that, we've been through an elaborate year-long process where the Amtrak Engineering Department has uh, worked with the town's consultants, Woodard and Curran, um, to approve the installation of the berm. And um, there are certain contractual issues that have arisen that are going to require the town to amend its agreement with Woodard and Curran. Uh, to address these issues, and so this resolution will authorize the town manager to sign the amendment uh, to the contract between the town and Woodard and Curran. It will allow the installation of the earthen berm. It will allow the completion of the water pollution uh, facility upgrade, and the town can then benefit from the clean water loan and start paying that back in 2023. Um, we've been through uh, just a tremendous amount of time, effort, and money getting it to this point. There's some additional risk that's presently unknown to the town uh, arising from the installation of the burn. We think it's, um, on balance, a negligible risk and far outweighed by the adverse consequences that would arise if we don't complete this project as scheduled. And um, the spring is already getting away from us. We need to get the berm in the ground. And so I recommend approval of this resolution. OK, thank you. Is there a motion to waive the reading of the resolution? Motion. Uh, Councillor Santanella, <laughs> is there a second? Councillor Ungeyer. All in favor, voting to waive the reading of the resolution, but have contained herein as part of the council record, please say yay. 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 Uh, mo motion, car motion carries. Uh, opposed? 
Councillor Ludwig, or are you in favor? No, I'm not opposed. Okay. Not opposed. I'm for. I'm for. Question. When you're ready. Okay. Okay. All right. Motion carries. All right. <clears throat> All right. Questions. Go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. Just let Councilor me clear. Ludwig. Read the resolution. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, when I read through the resolution. resolution. What are what we specifically, specifically holding Wilden Kern harmless, harmless for? for? I want to make. So, so when, when, I, when I think of a, an indemnification contract or a hold harmless, harmless they, are they are performing, performing some, some service, service that they feel could put them at risk. And so, what are we holding them harmless for specifically? Um, I can't get into much of this. It was on the executive session attorney client. We discussed that in executive counselor Ludwig. Okay. Um, so, so then, then what, what is, is the, the obligation, obligation of the town, the town to hold, to hold them harmless? Again, yeah, counselor, uh, uh, we, we discussed it in executive council, uh, executive session. I'm, I'm, I'd prefer not to get into too much of the details. Uh, the, the reader's digest version is, the uh, consultant's certificate that Woodard and Kern is going to be required to sign at the request of Amtrak in order to work in that railroad right of way was not contemplated when the town and Woodard and Kern did the original agreement. So Woodard and Kern is taking on some additional liability, and the town is agreeing uh, to indemnify them should uh, there be additional liability exposure arising from this additional unanticipated uh, liability exposure. And that's really all I can say. So, 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 so basically the town is taking on more liability, liability as, well. as well. We have no, no, um, no alternative, really. That's correct. So we're so taking on this liability, liability to, finish to finish the project? project? Yes, sir. And you're not, not at liberty, liberty to say how much, much risk, risk we could have financially? financially? I, it, I would be guessing, and um, I, I, I wouldn't speculate on that. Um, so, yeah, I can't quantify it. Okay. okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve the resolution as presented? Councillor Finger, second. second. Councillor Pisner, uh, roll call. Mayor Crisati. Four. Councillor Despard. Four. Four. Councillor Finger. Four. Councillor Hopkins. Four. Councillor Ludwig. Against. Yes. Councillor Mangini. Four. Councillor Pisner. Four. Councillor Santanella. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Four. That's nine in favor, one against, and no abstentions. G, discussion resolution. Resolution authorizing the town manager to sign the school readiness grant application agreement to the submitted to the Connecticut Office of Early Childhood for July 1st, 2022 through June 30th, 2023. Uh, this is an annual uh, renewal of the school readiness grant. Uh, would one of the uh, counselors like to make the motion to approve? Motion to approve. Uh, Councilor uh, Mangini. And would you like to read the uh, resolution? It's right here. Resolution authorizing the town manager to sign the school readiness grant application and agreement to be submitted to the Connecticut Office of Early Childhood for July 1, 2022 through July 30th, 2023, whereas the Office of Early Childhood has released the request for proposal for July 1, 2022 through June 30, 2023 for the School Readiness Grant and the Quality Enhancement Grant, which requires signatures by the Town Manager and Superintendent of Schools, and whereas Enfield is eligible to receive funding in the amount of Two hundred forty-nine thousand eight hundred seventy-two for school readiness slots, three thousand eight hundred eighty-one dollars for quality enhancement funding, and twelve thousand four hundred ninety-four dollars for administrative funds. Resolved that the town manager 
Ellen Zappo Sasu is authorized to sign and submit the grant application and enter into contract as awarded, subject to review and approval by the town attorney in the name and on behalf of the town of Enfield with the State Department of Education and to affix the corporate seal. Submitted April 22nd, 2022. Submitted by Cynthia Guerreri, Director of Social Services. Is there a second? Uh, Councilor Pisner, uh, discussion. Is there any discussion? Uh, Councilor Hopkins. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would, uh, through you, ask Ms. Guerreri if she could provide any, um, any helpful information about this. Sure. I'd be happy to. Cindy Guerreri, Director of Social Services, Town of Enfield. Um, in addition to what's included in the cover memo, the School Readiness Grant is a state-funded initiative administered by the Office of Early Childhood, and it provides affordable, high-quality care and education services for preschool-aged children um, as they prepare for kindergarten. At least 60% of the children enrolled must be at 75% of the state median income um, as uh, defined by legislation. School readiness providers have to meet specific quality components um, and be accredited nationally by the uh, National Association of Education for Young Children. Um, and staff are required to meet staffing requirements of all state funded programs. Um, components include family engagement and integration of children with disabilities into the program um, as important, important parts of that. Other quality components required, uh, collaboration with other community programs and services, family engagement partnership, health, pre-literacy, teacher training, nutrition, family literacy, admission policies that promote diversity, transition to kindergarten programming, professional development, a sliding fee scale, and an annual evaluation. Um, for the town of Enfield, KITE serves as the school readiness committee, which is defined by legislation. They will be voting on this application at their meeting on Wednesday evening. Um, they are going to be voting to approve the one applicant that applied to be included in the town's application, town lowercase t, not uppercase t. Um, and the one applicant continues to be our Early Childhood and Development Center at Stowe. Um, the Board of Education approved the superintendent to sign at their last meeting. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Uh, is there any discussion from anybody? Okay. Uh, Sheila, roll call. Mayor Crisati. Four. Councilor Despard. Four. Four. Councilor Finger. Four. Councilor Hopkins. Four. Councilor Ludwick. Four. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Pisner. Four. Councilor Santanella. Four. Councilor Ungeyer. Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Four. Ten in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Thank you very much. Uh, H, discussion the resolution, the resolution to settle pending property tax foreclosure action against 11 Thompson Court. Uh, this action tonight is a result of the newly reorganized Troubled Properties Group, uh, doubling down on long-standing issues and bringing them to uh, re resolution. The resolution is, whereas the town of Enfield commenced a foreclosure proceeding against 11 Thompson Court for several years of unpaid real estate taxes, and whereas the owners of the properties have offered to settle the foreclosure proceeding by conveying the property to the town by a deed in lieu of foreclosure. Resolved that the Enfield Town Council does hereby approve the proposed settlement in the town of Enfield versus William Anduaga, docket number uh, the following, and hereby agrees to accept a deed in lieu of foreclosure from William Anduaga and Julia Anduaga for 11 Thompson Court, prepared by the Office to the Town Attorney, date prepared April 20th, 2022. So moved. Councilor Mangini. Second. Second Deputy Mayor Sakala. Uh, any discussion? Okay, Sheila, roll call, please. Mayor Crisati. Four. Councilor Despard. Four. Four. Councilor Finger. Four. Councilor Hopkins. Four. Councilor Ludwick. 
Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Pisner. Four. Councilor Santanella. Four. Councilor Ungeyer. Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Four. Ten in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Okay. Uh, item 12. Is there any other uh, business uh, to come before our said meeting tonight? Okay. Uh, next, public communications. Uh, any person to uh, wishing to speak in front of the council? Uh, if you are, please state your name and address for the record. Once again, please refrain from any personalities uh, and be respectful. Uh, is there anybody who would like to approach the council? Okay, Mr. T. Katz. Bob T. Katz, 815 Woodgate Circle. Just want to say this morning, I had an appointment with my cardiologist, Dr. Lippman, down at St. Francis, and he adjusted my heart. So I have a little, my heart's functioning a little better today. But my heart was uh, very happy when you guys, you council, council people approved the pride flag. And many times I've come up here at previous councils and talked about diversity, and I was kind of ignored. And I, this is this is a uh, milestone, and we're, and the reason for it, this community has many minority populations, especially in the school system. Uh, the superintendent says in the school system, there's four people speak 14 different languages. It'll probably be 16 next year. Uh, Forty-eight percent are on free lunches, so there's a lot of poverty in town, and a lot of the poverty too is be some some of the jobs, the retail jobs, do not pay what the manufacturing and other other jobs pay. So we have a lot of work to do, especially in the budget. You know, the rents in, in where I live gone up for a one bedroom apartment from 1300 to 1600 dollars and that's that's before inflation started so what's that going to cost me it's going to cost me three times what mr peabody talked about so where do i stand but yeah i th i think this budget presentation that you did is very informing and and you You've done a great job in trying to reduce the mill rate, but there's, there's needs in the community that have to be addressed, especially, especially in the schools. Uh, just to give you a, a note, if you look at Connecticut Mirror, they, they uh, rate all the high schools across the nation and where, where we rate. It's very, Enfield's on a positive side. Um, there are some issues, but the Latino population is out done the rest of the rest of the minority groups and majority groups in this town so i think the school system is doing a great job but there's more that has to be done and uh, i hope everybody is looking positively to help every citizen in this town thank you okay thank you very much is there anybody else that would like to approach the council i declare public communications are over mm -hmm. Uh, are there any final councillor communications this evening? I sense none. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn? Yeah. Councillor Figures uh, and second, Councillor Rungeyer. By a show of hands, uh, all, in, all in favor? Yay. Yay. Uh, unanimous motion passed. Uh, Ten. And I would just like to say to everybody, um, have a great rest of the week, and to all the mothers out there, happy Mother's Day this Sunday coming up. And have a great week, the town of Enfield. Thank you very much.